Welcome to the Eagle's Nest Youth Export Incubator. In the first phase of the program, we saw dozens of young entrepreneurs from across Zimbabwe in the nest. They presented their businesses before the judges who will evaluate their export potential. 16 made it to the next stage, the incubator, where they received training on export-related matters. Now, these 16 are back in the nest for another round of elimination. In this stage, the judges will evaluate the progress they have made since their previous appearance in the nest. The selected businesses will proceed to the final round where the best of the lot will emerge as the eight finalists and will be rewarded with an export development package. This season of the Eagle's Nest is proudly brought to you by Zimtrade and EcoBank, the Pan-African Bank. First in the nest tonight is Tandi's Village. My name is Ngonidza Shemajura from Tandis Village Baobab range of products. We value aid uh, Baobabs. So from your Baobab coffee, your Baobab powder, your Baobab candy. We do our Baobab coffee and our Baobab powder here in Chegutu using the traditional way, which is Durini Muswi, because we are trying to promote the women who live nearby by creating employment and then we're also trying to stick to our roots, so doing things traditionally. So why we chose Baobab is because it's one fruit that's very healthy because it's packed with iron, it's packed with vitamin, it's packed with um, disease-fighting antioxidants, your potassium, your phosphorus, you can name it. So our current capacity now is 50 kgs of coffee a month. And then of powder, it's double that because the powder is usually more than the coffee from the production. With our capacity right now, we do not need a lot of employees, like 10 or more than that. We just need a few. So at, at most six, at least three, we can work with that. So we usually call the ladies who are surrounding us um, and then when they come through, we pay them after that. We've managed to sell to the British Embassy. We attended the ZAGS, Zambia Agricultural and Commercial Show of 2022, and we got recognition from the ambassador from Zimbabwe to Zambia, Charity Charamba. So some of the challenges that we face in our business are weather, that's number one, because we are running an outdoor factory. So sometimes if it's raining and then we have to stop production and we until the rain stops. And also the other challenges in terms of sourcing. So bulb of pulps are only found six months of the year and the other six months they are not available. And so we have to make sure that in those six months we have enough for the year. From the Eagles Nest program, one thing that I've learned is strategizing my business and um, accounting, taking note of every sale that you make, every purchase that you make in the business. So that has helped our business to grow bigger because before that, whatever sale that I would make, the next thing I'm going to buy this and that. Now I know that I have to put myself on a payroll in my business. Since our last pitch, we have managed to make about 2,400 in sales and most of the revenue is being brought in by food and beverages and then the um, snacks. So we made certain changes to the packaging of our candy to make it more user-friendly. So now, as you can see, it's resealable. When you open your snacks, you don't have to finish them on, on one go. And then we also introduced different lines of oils we only used to have one oil, which was the original baobab oil, which was not scented. But now we've introduced a scented one because some people don't like the um, raw uh, baobab oil because it has a nutty uh, scent to it. So we introduced something else which has a scent that's attractive. And we also introduced the firming oil for women who have breastfed 
or are having issues with your breast. So it's a formulation of herbs and bulbop oil as well. Um, also from our last pitch, we were told to improve our logo to make it more consistent and our font as well. So from the booklets that you have, there's an um, outline of what our new packaging is going to have, including a nutritional value um, outline for our new packaging. So we could not have it today because from the factory that uh, manufactures our, pa our packaging, it takes time for them to change from the old one to the new one. But as you can see from the booklet, that's going to be our new packaging. Well, well done to you for a very flawless presentation. I am thoroughly impressed with the notes that you have highlighted in the pamphlets you've given us, the improvements you've made on your packaging, um, I think you're making this so easy <laughs> for me. I won't speak for everyone else, but you're making it so easy for me because what I see before me is a budding entrepreneur who's understood what it is that your unique selling point is and you're going above and beyond to execute. And I think it's just a matter of capacity, um, but with the right resources around you, I really do believe that... Um, you're onto a winning formula. Um, I'd probably say to you, make sure you just have the correct team around you in terms of understanding your cost buildups, your customer acquisition expenses that you're going to be incurring. Uh, but besides that, um, very well done to you so far. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I would want to say, um, what can you say is top three things that are hindering you to be what you want to be? Uh, mostly it's capacity. So at the moment we are doing our projects manually. So for instance, the barber coffee and the barber powder, we use the, the mortar and pestle, also known as Ludine Mutsui. So we would love in the future to buy machinery to make our capacity grow from one ton a year to maybe 16 tons a year or even more than that. What's your turnover? Monthly turnover, I would say we make about 1,500 a month and mostly from the bulb of uh, coffee and the powder, and then from the cosmetics, and then the snacks. That's your sales yes. turnover. So, and your profit? Uh, the profit is about 60%, because since we are doing our labor manually, uh, it's cheaper for us. Considering that we're using the mortar and pestle and no machinery that needs to be fixed, that breaks down, this is um, uh, an instrument that just works throughout the year. And if it does um, break, it's quite cheap to replace it. Okay, where are you producing from? In Chegutu. All right. You said 1,500? Yes. Per month. Um, what's your stock holding of raw materials at any given time? We source the baobab fruit at a certain period during the year because we can't source it throughout the year. So we source maybe for the rest of the year, if we have the resources to do so, or just for a short period of the year. So in, in maybe four tons, if, uh, depending on the transport, where the raw materials are coming from, because we source as far as Binga, as far as Chimani Mani, Goku. So you're sitting on four tons at any given time? Yes. And is that adequate to meet your uh, production capacity? Does it match? To meet our production capacity, I would say no. Uh, considering what I say that we do not have the machinery. So we do have excess raw material just sitting because we cannot produce as much as we'd want to. But if we did have the machinery, then the four tons would even be very little for us to be producing throughout the year. How much does this machinery cost that you need? Um, about 5,000. Okay, so for with, a a turnover, with a turnover of 1,500 and you're making a margin of 60%, mm -hmm. why, why haven't you bought it? Because if you wanted to go and be export ready, you're going to have to capacitate yourself True. that way, True. all right? Mm -hmm. So how far are you on that? So the issue, the reason why we haven't been able to buy machinery on our own is because we haven't been funded by anyone. So this is money that I have saved up myself that I've put into the business. So it's um, a self-made fund and if I haven't received any funding from anyone else. So are you operating at full capacity right now? Yes, we And are. What, what are you producing? We are operating at full capacity. 
So working every day of the week, Monday to Friday, all shifts or whatever, you're producing about five to six hundred kgs. Yes. And is that e- and you're selling everything you produce? Yes, we are selling everything that we produce. That's but wonderful. But we are not also producing throughout the, uh, let's say, for example, seven days in a week. We don't work the whole seven days. We work maybe for three days a week because as, as, as much as we produce in Chebutu, we also pack here in Harare. So we need to demarcate the time for production and for packing and for markets as well. Why the need to pack in Harare and not in Chebutu? Because there's no electricity in Chebutu. So we need to seal some of the products, like the coffee, the candy, we need to seal them. So we do it in Harare with this electricity. Okay. So you're going to work on electrifying as well in the yes, near future? Yes, definitely. Okay, well done. Thank this you. is a very impressive uh, presentation, as my counterparts have shared. It's a yes from me, Tandi. Well done. Um, Thank you. Keep on at it. Tandi, there's, there's something that... Um, are you proud of this brand? The brand? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Are you proud of the country you were born and raised in? <laughs> yes, sir, I am. Do you think it would be nice to put something that if this goes somewhere in the world, people won't try and understand what 263 means? Definitely. I think it would be good to, to put, you know, proudly Zimbabwean. Um, I think out of all the presentations we've seen, nobody is presented like this. And it makes, you know, life a lot easier for the judges when somebody is, you know, put everything down to the T. Yeah. So for me, it's a yes. And um, wish you all the best. I think my yes came out in the first two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, this is a very good uh, presentation. Well prepared. Uh, I can see the product range is clear. Uh, if you just focus on selling what you have uh, instead of uh, more and more product extension, I think let's get some uh, mileage with what we have. Um, I think you're on the right track. Uh, it's a yes from me. Thank you. I think the last thing I'd probably want to say to you is, um, considering that you've only got such a small time frame to get your ba- uh, baobab, I would probably want to advise you um, and say to you, see how you can get... Um, the biggest bang for your baobab. So if the amount of baobab you use in this equates to the same amount you're using for this product, the pricing point you have on the first one versus the second one, you're probably better off using the baobab for something that brings you a higher return. As much as this is fun and the likes, your margins on this scared me a bit when you said it. So that's something I just want you to think about and see how best you can really play around with uh, the raw material and just make sure you get as much value out of it, considering that you can only, you have a short window period to collect and use um, per year. All right, thank you yeah. very much. But all the best, thank you. Thank you. All right. Amazing. The last time she blew us away with her slides, this time took it no. a step further, it's, it's, it's did her pamphlet. Stuff. It's has taken stuff. all our advice no, no, it's, it's, and run with yeah. it. Impressive. Yeah. Very. Ngonizashe is through to the final round and again proving herself to be a force to be reckoned with. Next is Modiwa Skincare. We caught up with Modiwa Skincare at their production site in Arare. My name is Helen Chipiza. I am the CEO of Modiwa Skincare, where we focus on value addition of indigenous plant-based ingredients to come up with effective skincare solutions for all skin types. We started back in 2020 to make creams and lotions for people with different skin types, especially oily skin and dry skin. Back in university, I had a friend of mine who had extremely dry skin and everything that she was trying for her skin was either expensive or ineffective. So then since we were studying chemical technology, we decided to do an experiment and made a lotion for her, which when she used on her skin worked complete wonders. So from there, we started making creams for individuals, people who had asked us specifically to make creams for them. And then we decided to turn this into a business, which we are still running up to today. We have a team of five people, including myself, 
Four of them are the other directors that we work with. And then we also have employees that we work with. We only have three at the moment and they work on a shift basis depending on the production demand. So right now we are based in Mebere, Narae. Uh, this is a home-based industry. The reason why we chose this place is because we are just starting out. We don't have um, huge volumes of production that we are dealing with. So this is the most ideal place for us. And also in terms of cutting costs, in terms of rentals and electricity bills, it also helps us to cut those costs and then focus that money into bootstrapping the business and growing it much bigger. The challenges that we mostly face when creating our products is in terms of scaling. So once you do a pilot study of the product that you want to make, you may come up with a good product with all the qualities that you require. But then once you decide to make a big batch, there are a lot of variables, which include uh, the time that is going to take, the mixing that you're going to do. And since we're just starting out, we have uh, very simple methods of mixing. And then we also have very simple equipment that we use. So sometimes we have challenges when we scale up the batch. We also have challenges in terms of distribution of our products as we have not been able to get uh, a lot of shops to take our products. And then we also have a challenge in terms of marketing because as someone who studied uh, science, I do not have a strong marketing background. So then I'm still trying to find my feet as well as the rest of the team in terms of how best we can market our products and in our space on the market. Could you share uh, some feedback on what you uh, asked to do in your last presentation and uh, the progress you've made so far? Thank you. So in my last presentation, I was asked to improve on my labeling and I have improved in terms of the design as well as the paper that I'm using. But I do uh, note, note that there's still room for improvement as someone who's still up and coming. I have also managed to take interest and do a course in marketing, which I was advised to take in order to better present my product to people so that they don't only understand the technical part, but they also understand um, the solution part of why they need to buy the product that I have. Okay, and how much uh, have you sold to date since your last presentation? Since my last presentation, I've, uh, I've sold an average of 200 bottles. 200 bottles per month? Not per month, from the time I pitched up to now. Up to now? Yes. Okay, so from the, the figures you've just shared, you last mentioned that you were distributing in Harare and in Kwekwe. Yes. Um, have you done anything else in terms of expansion of your markets, or are these sales still in the specific areas you were focusing on uh, before? They're still in the specific areas I was focusing on, because since the time of the pitch up to now, we have been working on the sunscreen for which is suitable for all skin types and especially for people living with albinism. Um, okay, have you done anything, any developments on your testing? Yes, mm -hmm. uh, so we are affiliated with Bindra University, which is where I attained my BSc degree. So anytime we need um, instrumentation, for example, when we needed to test the sunscreen for the sun protection factor, we go there and use the UV spectral photometer there. And then also, I use my background in chemistry. So the basic tests, like knowing the pH of the product and the color and the stress test, I also do them. Okay, but is there anything like, um, what about your SARS certifications, your clinical tests? Like, I don't think the university has the authority to give those um, if you're planning on selling in Zimbabwe, all of Zimbabwe in the region. So because the university is a research center, so the results that they produce are credible enough to be presented into a market. But as for the SAS certification, we are still working on it, uh, especially in terms of our working space. Um, and then I see your... Your capacity, you're probably operating at about 10%, 10, 
yes, capacity. Because you say you manufacture eight, 60 bottles in an eight hour shift. So in a month you'd have what, 22 shifts? That should give you about 1,320, but you're only selling 150 to 200. I, I just want to understand where the issue is because you obviously don't have a capacity problem. Do you have a demand problem? It's not a demand problem mm. per se, but then in terms of, um, I think my biggest challenge is penetrating into the markets in terms of um, agreeing with retailers on how to stock the product. Because our main challenge is that if we, we advertise the product and you say the body cream is $3 for a 250 jar, if someone sees it in shop A and shop B, we want them to see it at $3. But then sometimes, let's say for pharmacies, they want to put their own markup, which then will disrupt our marketing. And I don't think you're going to be able to keep a handle on that. Here. Yeah, that's not, that shouldn't be your concern. It, should, it I think, shouldn't be yeah. your concern. I just want to know, um, why should I use Mudiwa skincare compared to the wide variety of choices that are there? Because I feel if, if you convince me, you know, I don't think you'll have a problem convincing other people to then, you know, uptake your product. Right. So specifically for the sunscreen, what happens is that the sunscreens that are currently in the market, they are based on chemical sun blockers. So these chemical sun blockers in, in, for them to, to protect your skin from the sun, they have to permeate into your, into your skin. And because of prolonged exposure, they cause uh, long-term health effects. For example, you even end up getting the skin cancer that you're trying to protect yourself from. And you also have hormonal disruptions. And if we even weaken your immune system against fighting other diseases. Have you even approached um, local dermatologists? Because that would be a start. Mm -hmm. You know, or even I think the Albinos Association, they also get, I think they get donors who buy from them. If you go in there and you break into that market and you give them a discounted price, maybe at cost on the initial order or something, that gets you in. It gets you into the door and then people start to know who Mediwa is and then they start looking for it, you see. And if yes. they know, oh my, it's $3 versus uh, $5 packs of the other one, then you've got a thing going. I want to see an increase in, in your sales. I think come back next year. It's mm. a no for me. Yeah. Um, I think um, as I look at this product, right, um, Diana is right there. She can't read what it says. You know, I'm here. I'm squinting, right? And your product is on a shelf and people are walking past. It must shout who you are. It's very, very apologetic. Definitely on the branding side, there needs to be a lot of improvement. Uh, product, I'm sure it's, still a, it's a good product, but in, until people know who you are and what you're selling, and until the product is properly market ready, I don't think it's there yet. So it's a no for me. The essence of what we're trying to achieve here is to incubate people who have the potential to take a product out for export. And I don't think you've got too far off to go. I would love to see you have the opportunity to do so. And I don't think it would require too much effort for you to finally get to that point, especially since right now you are at a stage where you've got a proof of concept, you've got some clients, but there's a lot of refining that needs to be done. So it would be a yes from me. For me, I'm gonna give you a yes, because um, I can see that you're onto something, and if you really just apply all these things you're being told, I'm, I'm sure you can come up with something. So for me, it's a yes. So two yeses and two noes, and um, yeah. Yeah, I think the best thing we can do is uh, put you in the waiting room, and we'll let you know once we're done with the other contestants. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm not convinced. The mistake she's making, which I feel she's completely missed, is that in most instances, right, you apply your lotion and then you apply sunscreen. She's failing to tell us that we've shortened the process, especially for women. 
right, where you want to use a sunscreen or sun protector. But, and also the fact that especially for your melanin skin, it's not leaving that purple stain that sunscreen usually does. She needs to just take the time now to say, look, the Which technical side and the clinical, I understand. But the, this section is what's missing. You see, like Diana saying, that all of that, what you're saying, is a year away. It's not a now thing. But why would it be a year away? Because it's take for instance, if she has someone who's going to do brand identity for her and give her a complete this, this, setup, this, this, this thing is time. going to transform and, overnight. And for me, like she's saying, and like you highlighted, yeah. and she said in a presentation, her niche market could be the albino community, right? If she hits hard on that, trust you me, no, that can blow she, her totally. If she hits hard on that, what has she been doing in the last three months? No, but she, she doesn't have direction and focus. And she's, so, she's a technical and clinical person. She, she, Next is Ingebetu Private Limited. In her first presentation. Um, it's difficult to pronounce, right? Um, as you enter new markets, you know, people will find it increasingly difficult to actually, you know, pronounce. I really commend the fact that you're doing something that has cold chain management involved and you're a startup. <laughs> Ingebetu. Easy. <laughs> right. No, no, no. I, I, I get it. I get it. I get it. Can you just give us a brief of uh, what we shared with you last time and what improvements you've made since then? As of last time, what we have managed to do is we were given points on what to improve on. First of all, which was um, information on our packaging. We were supposed to put a best before dates, which is what we have done. We're also supposed uh, to put nutritional information. We have also started working on that. Unfortunately, we cannot get good packaging for small businesses in Zimbabwe. So we're actually getting um, that done in South Africa. We were also asked to put ingredients which we had not put last time and we've also managed to put the ingredients. And we were also challenged to say we started our business last year and we've only been in a few shops. We would like to say we've managed to get into three shops as of the last time we pitched, which is Trade Center, Borrowed Dale, um, Fruit and Vegetable Palace in Newlands and Fresh Grocer uh, along Enterprise Road. We um, also have managed to increase our production capacity. Last time we came here, we were producing like 50 to 70 kgs every month, but we have moved from uh, that to 100 um, kgs every week of different uh, uh, brands. We've also managed to get more from our usual um, customers, which is one of them being um, fresh basket in food basket in Chishawasha. Before they used to take five, 10 kgs without any consistency of um, about four um, variations of our brands. Now they're actually taking 15 kgs of each every month. And we know that definitely which are their products that they like. So that also means our database has improved. Um, we've managed to get to about 750, according at uh, 750 consumers, according to the information that our merchandisers have managed to gather. We were also encouraged um, to make sure that our products are balanced. So before, when we came here, our mixed vegetables only had peas, carrots, and um, green beans. Now we've also managed to add sweet corn. So that's another nutritional value that has been added to our product. And we are currently selling that for $6.50. Our mixed berries are $10 for the kg, as well as our um, strawberries. They go for the same $10. You were giving a, given a little bit more feedback last time. Yes. Um, that you, you chose to ignore about the branding and the brand. The name. Okay, we have worked. In fact, the day I left here, I did a sort of a poll to find out um, from the consumers if they, what they would think about our name. Locally, what I've noticed is people would not want us to change on our name. So that would mean we'd take your advice again that you, give it, you gave us to say, if we decide to stick to our name, that means we have to really invest in it. We're hoping that we'll be able to do that because unfortunately the patriotism is refusing to get away from me. So, like in the <laughs> so you are the one <laughs> capturing yourself. So I am... Um, 
thinking that it would be good for us to actually invest in the name and keep the naming there too. Congratulations on the strides you've made since the last session. Um, I think for me, what I would really like to see or hear more of is in terms of your penetration for the rest of the local market. Um, I'm happy to see that you're making a lot of progress and congratulations on the three stores that you mentioned that you're now um, in. Yes. I think it's really key, um, especially because your product is so sensitive. And I think yes. I said this in the yes. last session. Yes. That you really need to fully exploit being able to meet your distribution demands and like really your supply chain of your product across Zimbabwe for you to have a nice clear scope of what it would entail for you to reach um, export market. Uh, not to say that your product is not export ready, but I think in terms of your systems, they may not be. Um, and the importance lies in being able to put those structures in place, have the right people around you to do so. Then I think we can have that conversation where I would want you to come back and say to me, <coughs> I'm now managing to get products um, to Gweru, I'm managing to get products to Chiredzi, I'm managing to get products to Mutare, sure. you know. Um, once you reach that stage, then I think we were in a better place and a better position to be able to really tell how to penetrate the, 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 the export market. But I think you're doing exceedingly well so far. So, yeah, congrats on that. Um, I'm interested to know what the shelf life is for the product or the freezer life. Okay, so if they are kept at the right temperatures, they can go up to a year. But like she said, they are very sensitive. And unfortunately, in our households, we're experiencing a lot of power cuts. But um, all things being equal, 12 months. 12 months. Yes. All right. And then um, what component of the, of the total price is packaging? Um, I think we are at about a dollar eighty on for, packaging. Yes, for buying the the actual plastic as well as the the stickers. Though we are currently working, like I indicated, we're working with a company in South Africa to try and make sure that we don't use labels. We have a packaging that is already printed on because locally we tried, but we couldn't afford the quantities that they wanted. Will that to reduce do. your one eighty? Yes, you it, it would. Printed? It would. Okay. Yes. You know what? I think when you when you're in manufacturing, yes, go to source. Okay. Right. Take a few days. Go to look for the manufacturers of the packaging. Yeah. It will be worthwhile in the long run because the moment you're getting from third parties and things like that, you're literally selling for them. It's true. I would recommend you go to the source, find the manufacturer true. that makes them, and you'll find that they have so many variations of the same thing. You know, uh, and you'll see that uh, you have a very big difference in, in the margin. Yeah, I, I think for me, um, just to add on your branding, um, okay. but I think one of the most important things which has been reiterated is your name. I know you're being patriotic. No, I'm not being um, you. You clearly declared by yourself <laughs> that you are. But um, I honestly think, um, really consider that. Yes. Right now, you're still a bit attached because you're a year, two years old. All these judges have seen a lot. Yes. And they're trying to help you. Yes. So five years down the line, you won't say, I wish I had done this. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to judge. Mine is a yes. I love what you've done. You've really improved from the last time. And your figures are coming up. So it's a yes for me. OK, on my part, I want you to do a lot more in the space of um, training programs. Okay. Um, for example, supply chain management, get a better understanding of what you really, really need. And why I'm saying that is because my concern for you is if you try and grow this too quickly and you don't have those correct structures, it can derail something that is brilliant. So for me, on that basis, it's not a no because you're falling short. It's a no because I don't think it's a program that's going to fully capacitate you in the way you need for where your business is and where it needs to get to. Okay. So maybe in another year or two, we can now start talking export. 
but so it's a no for me from this side. But I wish you all the best. Thank you. Yeah, you know, um, you've chosen uh, <laughs> what you want to change, you know, and uh, I get it, you know, you're very attached to what you've built. Um, commercially, you'll face some um, resistance. Um, but I will say that uh, it seems quite solid, you know, um, I'd like to hear more about your um, how you handle the logistics mm -hmm. of frozen food. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the cost of that? You know, of your, your product sitting at the border for four days. Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah. Have you considered all those things? You could lose a whole load. Yep. Because of a technical... Uh, and Simra. Yeah, exactly. True. And uh, when your product is in Harare, where is it mm -hmm. stored? Mm -hmm. When it's in Mutare, where is it stored yep. for distribution? Yep. Um, I think the challenge being that you require cold rooms everywhere. Yeah. You know, and with power cuts, how does that affect you? Yeah. Not only how does that affect you, how does that affect the price and the yeah. profitability? Because every single day that this is on a shelf, not in a store or not bought by a client, mm -hmm. it's costing you money. Mm -hmm. Okay, True. it's not like a packet of chips. They produce it, they put it in a box and yep. it sits. For and <laughs> maybe it gathers dust, maybe the rats can get to it. Okay, but literally yours is costing you money. So the cost of production is increasing for as long as it's not sold. Yep. So that worries me quite considerably. Okay. Um, for me, it's a not yet. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think let's um, work on the local logistics. Let's uh, saturate the market, work on your channels, and then let's come back and then see if there's potential to take this to Mozambique, to Zambia. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful product. It looks really good. Um, yeah, if I see it in the store, I'll pick it up. Okay, I'm going to give you a yes. Right, um, because I, I like the product, you know, uh, I like the product. Is this, um, this is not the full range. Yeah. Uh, but I do believe that there's a lot of potential. Uh, your competition, though, is the house brands. Yeah. You know, they can do it themselves. True. You know, in the supermarket, spa can do it themselves, pick and pay can can package this. You need to find a way to overcome such challenges. For now, I'll give you a yes, but there's a lot of logistical stuff that I have uh, big questions on, mm -hmm. uh, but I think that's something that can be figured out. Thank you. Two yeses. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, for now, we're going to put you in the waiting room. Uh, you will get your final results uh, within the next few days. Okay, thank you. <laughs> no worries. Right, I'll just collect this. Sure. Thank you very much. Thank you. The frozen food entrepreneur now awaits her final verdict, which will be announced after further deliberations by the judges. Last to face the judges tonight is Nature Streets Zimbabwe. My name is Willard Madzimbamuto. I am a director of F Dominion International Group, which trades as Nature Street Zimbabwe. Now, we are an organic, internationally certified firm, which is agro-based for seven main products. Uh, we have uh, sweet potato, ginger, garlic, turmeric, uh, honey, zumbani, and moringa. But currently, we are focusing on two main uh, products, which is um, the honey, the apiary, which we have set up, which I'm going to show you later onwards. Then also, we are seriously focusing on the sweet potato brand. Now, what we have done um, in the past 2021 to 2022 season, we have done a pilot project for sweet potato, which was a two hectare uh, pilot project. And out of that pilot project, we managed to harvest about 22 tons, which was an average of 11 tons per hectare. It was more of a trial because we're still trying to set up and trying to see how best we can try to produce only organically without fertilizer, without chemicals, without anything. So the kind of setup that we do here, it's purely natural, which is an integration of the natural environment, which I'm going to show you later on as the apiary and even the areas where we take our decomposed matter. 
And um, because of that, the pilot project for the 2021 to 22 season was for the sweet potato, which were mixed varieties, by the way, which we had planted in 2021, December. But um, when we then went for an international expo in Italy, we then discovered a lot. We learned a lot with respect to the quality and the varieties that the international market favored. And more particularly, they were looking at um, the orange flesh variety, which is the Bero Grand, and of late, the one Irene and Alicia, which are being developed locally. And for our pilot project, we had done a mixture of about three varieties. We had the Bero Grand, we also had German II, and we had Chingova. So this was before we actually knew the requirements of the export market specifically. But after that exposure uh, through the ZimTrade initiated trip in Italy, we then managed to understand what the requirements for the international market were. From our interaction with uh, uh, the expo which we attended, the market is looking for quality, is looking for quantity and consistency. So we have to push volumes. So with our pilot project, if we manage to get an average of 11 tons per hectare, um, we are going to be conservative to say we are going to work with 10 tons. So if we're going to be doing 10 hectares, we are looking at a minimum of 100 tons of sweet potatoes for this upcoming season, which is about three container, 30 ton containers, which will actually feed into the, the quantity that the market, at least as a minimum, is looking for. So quantity, then also quality, we are going to try to improve. We've had some interventions that we have received and guidance and training that we've also received through ZimTrade and other key stakeholders that we have been linked with who are helping us to try to push the production and the quality side of things. And also, as we move forward, we are currently working through rain-fed agriculture. This rain-fed agriculture, we are trying to plant because we've just received the rains. But it is also our target, our intention to go all year round. So we are developing our water systems. We've just sunk a ball, but it is not, it doesn't have capacity to irrigate 10 hectares. So we still need to put up a massive 100,000 liter reserve, water reservoir. We also need to put up um, a, a structure, a warehouse for the curing of the sweet potato that we are going to be harvesting this year. So we are trying by all means to make sure that we grow green, we grow naturally without any external intervention or any external help. So we're not going to be buying fertilizers. We're not going to be buying chemicals. We're not going to be buying sweet, uh, the, 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 the vines in the long run because the kind of uh, crops that you're dealing with as well, you plant, then you then retain your own seedlings for future uh, purposes as well. So it's a, a farm-based integrated system which is also economical and which also reduces costs on our part. So this is what we are, are mainly trying to focus and looking for as we move forward. Okay, I would like you to maybe just uh, give us uh, an update of what you've done since the last session when you came here. Thank you. Um, Firstly, we have been engaged by Ecoset for the recertification because the international certification that we hold lapses after every year. So we are due for recertification. They have actually sent us a court for 35,000 rand for the recertification process. So we are actually in process for the recertification, which is scheduled for January 2023. Now, secondly, um, from the last pitch, um, one main issue, was which was topical related to capacity of the product, as in um, the volumes, because when we pitched, we had not yet um, harvested the sweet potato that we had. And our initial forecast was 40 tons from the pilot project of two hectares. So we then managed to do the harvesting period and we managed to get 22.3 tons as opposed to the 40 tons that we initially had forecasted on. So that's another uh, development that occurred from the previous, the previous pitch. Then, um, what we've also what we've also done um, as we pitched last time, it was with respect to the pilot two hectare project, which we have then scaled up. We are scaling up to ten hectares uh, this year. I think this was another issue that um, the Eagles raised as to why we were a bit um, skeptical in trying to go full blown for ten hectares because initially we had said we'll do six. Uh, for the export market and two for the local market. But because of further interaction, we've then decided to go full blown for the 10, 10 hectares. So we've also received quotes for the vines that we need for the specific orange fleshed variety that's required. Because again, another challenge last time was that we had three varieties. Um, we had German two, we had uh, Bero Grand and Chingova. 
And we then discovered that the export market was specifically more interested with the orange-fleshed variety. So we have received a quote for that. And um, for the 10 hectares that we intend to do this cropping season, we are looking at a cost of about 2,500 US dollars for us to do that. So that's another development is we narrow focus down to the specific variety that's required by the market. Okay, so from the 22.3 tons that you managed to harvest, um, could you maybe just give a highlight of what you think were the main reasons you didn't manage to reach your expected target? Okay, thank you. Um, I think basically there were about three challenges. Firstly, we had a composite of varieties in the field. This was informed ignorantly, obviously, on our part. We had German two, then a bit of Perogrand and uh, Chingova. And the performance and yielding capacity of these three varieties differ. And the list that we had, which is Perogrand, the orange flesh one, is actually the high-yielding variety. And the other two uh, varieties that we had were not as is high yielding as this one. Then secondly, um, we faced a challenge of um, what they could refer to as a sweet potato weevil, um, which is a particular pest that attacks uh, sweet potato. Unfortunately, if that pest attacks a particular tuber, you can't then sell it, unless probably you have to use it domestically. You can't take it to the market because it would have been, uh, it would have been affected. And, um, also, another challenge probably that um, affected us much had to do with our, our, our composting. We, we did not do much in terms of um, the organic composting and the natural matter that you're putting. And I would want to believe even after when we then had the technical intervention uh, through ZimTrade, we managed to get the kind of advice that we believe is very, very important taking us forward. So I think these three main issues were really detrimental in us failing to reach the targeted, targeted yield. Yeah, so you see, this is, this is where my concern lies mm -hmm. because you've got your certification. Yes. You now don't have the statistics on the uh, vine that you want to do that's for export. And you are now going in on 10 hectares. And yet right now, even on that first season of this crop, even if we take away just your setup expenses, mm -hmm. we are not, we're not breaking even. If I'm just looking at your numbers and what you're telling me was your, um, your, 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 your sales. Yes, this is the main reason why we have deliberately invested so much in trying to break into the export market. I'll be honest, the local market is ruthless insofar as sweet potato is concerned. We're living in a country where virtually in every village, in all streets, there are sweet potato, in Mbari, there are sweet potatoes. So definitely when you're dealing with the local market, that's a serious, serious challenge for us. I'm very concerned mm. because you're spending so much time traveling mm. and uh, you know, trying to get markets. You don't have a product yet. You haven't streamlined or perfected your product. You know, that's my concern. No, his order of events is fine. Because when it comes to farming, you can't plant things and you don't have a market. No, so I, you I can't get that. Fault I, on no, going to get the markets. I get that. I think right now it's 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 premature. I'm looking at all the 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 things to be done, tractors and implements and you know, the Germany trip. Uh Let's, let, let's get the feedback from Italy, right? Let's work with Italy market and try and supply Italy before going to Germany and sub South Africa, etc. Let's perfect our product. I still feel that there's a lot of room for improvement before we can really tackle the export side of things. Mm -hmm. I think the fact that if you are to go through, it's because you need the training, because there's no way you'll be able to actually continue with your preparations for what you're working on without that training. True. So my yes is for you, not so much that you're going to have a product that's export ready okay. this year, but my yes to you so that you go through the process, understand what uh, is, is ne needed from you, okay. because your product is specifically what is being looked for. And you need that information and that training and exposure for you to know what the, the, the do's and don'ts of what you're, 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 you're doing on your farm. So it's a yes for the training and the exposure, but I don't think you have a product that will be ready for export. Thank I you. want to ask my man, um, how long have you been 
doing these sweet potatoes for now? The, the first, the, the crop that we harvested this season was our first pilot project. So it's your first time? Yes. Okay. Yeah. And this is the, so did you make a profit or loss on this capital that you invested? You invested 26,000? We have not yet made profit. Okay. We have not made profit. Actually, so how, how much have you gotten back from what you invested initially? Um, the only amount of money we have received is 7.3. From the 26? From the 26. And according to our plan, actually, this is a very capital intensive um, enterprise. It's very serious. So we're actually looking to say in the next, in the first three to four years, we are trying to set up and solidify the foundations. So we're not really looking much into, 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 into profits. So even if this kind the, 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 the travels that um, I've been referring to were so much relating to exposure, because in terms of production generally in, in Zimbabwe, production is not an issue. Mm. But what you then have to do with the product is, is where it's, that's the most sticking point. And mm. this is the reason why we had to start from the end of us getting the required information, certification that relates to the market entry and also trying to break even to get the markets. Yeah, you, you know what I love about you? Uh, mm. You remind me of me when I started business. I was very inquisitive. Thank you. I wanted to travel anywhere. There was an expo to Thank learn you. about the trade, I mean. Thank and that's a good thing. And I think you need to keep that enthusiasm up because okay. trust you me, four or five years down the line, like you're saying, you will have learned about all these insects and this, that, and the other that, you know, will help you to maximize and reach, you know, exactly what you want to achieve. But I think for now, um, I believe um, you're not yet ready. Mm. And um, I think this, this program, and already ZimTrade is doing amazing work for you, mm. you know, by giving you the exposure that you need to learn from, you know, the first world countries which need your product. So yeah. you're not competing. I, I love your vision. You're not worried about Zimbabwe. You want to create a product which is ready for that side because there's larger volumes and bigger profits that side. Thank so you. for now it's a no, but don't let your passion and your enthusiasm draw you back. Okay. Keep that enthusiasm up. I think three, four years down the line, after you've gone through a couple of seasons, you'll perfect the art of coming up with a top quality product. So Thank for you. now, it's a no from me. Thank you. Yeah, I, I'd like to agree with, uh, with George there, you know. Um, R&D, business development, very, very good. We have some people that have come onto this uh, platform that actually have products that they've been selling for a year that are trying to go export. You know, you're already out there, but you don't have the product. Do you get what I'm saying? And I think uh, the, why I was saying it's a bit premature is because I think you need to just spend a bit more time developing, you know, the back end. You know, uh, certification is good, uh, but you're already renewing your certification before you've perfected your product. I think you, you, you're spending money on this when your product is not ready. Because right now you're expecting 40, you got 20, 22. That's a huge deficit. And what happens to your relationship with your customer across the, across the globe? It's a big challenge, and I think you need to perfect the, the farming side. It's a no from me. Thank you. Right. Um, you mentioned that uh, the orange sweet potato has got a higher yield yes. than the ones that you produced most of. Yeah. Okay, what are the numbers there? The average potential yield is 32 tons a hectare for the barrel grant, uh, TRB barrel grant, the orange flesh variety. Okay, and then the other varieties? The other varieties, um, an average of 20, 15 to 20 tons. 15 to 20 tons per yes. hectare. Those are the lower yields. Yeah. So given that you've attained 11 tons per hectare, Yes. so if we take 15 tons per hectare on the lower yield product, right? Uh, yes. So you're likely... Yield will be 23 tons per hectare, okay. most likely, if we're going to go by your yes. two hectare pilot. Okay. Yes. The next time you present your financials, you need to separate your direct cost of production, right? Okay. So that we can appreciate what has gone into the production of the yield okay. and separate it from long term um, semi fixed costs. 
okay. like your um, your certification that you can amortize over a couple of years. Okay. You decide whether you're going into this sweet potato business for the next five years. Okay. So you want the payback to be over the five years. That's okay. where you put the cost of your certification so that it doesn't confuse us when we see this 26,000 and we think, okay, okay where did that money go? We okay. only got 7,000 back. All right. Okay. So looking at that, if I separate those, I come up with approximately 11,000 as your, your, your direct cost of production. Okay. And given that it was the lower yield, if you then compare the lower yield that you got, right, versus the amount of money that you, the 7,000, okay, mm. I think that if you grew the right product and you sent it to the right market mm. at $900 per ton, it would still be profitable, mm. okay? And given that the type of product that he has in the agricultural sec sector, okay, he cannot first grow the product and then decide now I want to take it to Germany and now I want to take it to Italy. The way that he's gotten about it, where he's gone and he's visited the markets, all right, is correct. It's exactly right, okay? And I think maybe you shouldn't go in for 10 hectares this time around. I don't know. It's up to you. It depends on your risk appetite now, okay. what you're going to go in and do. Okay. okay. But I would go in and I would grow the right product under the right circumstances. The pilot was there for yeah. us to learn the lessons. Okay. We've learned the lessons because that is the purpose of a pilot. That is the purpose of incubating him in this show and taking him to the next place that he's going to get at. That pilot has got enough information, I think, for him to figure out what he needs to do and what not. He was already selling to food lovers um, of that and to other buyers as well. I'm not convinced, guys. Yeah, I think I, I'm not convinced either. I'm, 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 I'm sorry to say, guys, this sounds to me like a business plan. No, it's no. not a business plan. No, that's what it sounds it's like. It's the nature. It's sounding it's like a business, a business plan, plan because no. it's the nature of the product. It's not a product do, that you I think what we can do, there are two yeses and two no's. Mm -hmm. I think let's, let's... Let him go into yeah. the let, waiting let, room. Let, let's let's uh, deliberate on this mm. and then we can make a decision because I don't think we're going to break even um, right now. So I think we will have to let him know with time because okay. yeah. I don't think we can make this decision right now. Fair enough. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Two Thank you so much. She knows. Thank All you. the best. Thank you very much. For Thank you. saying your prayers. Guys. I it's wanted Eagle's Nest for farmers only. No, it's unfair. Yes. It's unfair for people who have products here. Mm -mm. It's not mm -mm. unfair. Mm -mm. No, I'll mm -mm. Tell it's you the why. dynamics that you guys fail to understand about farming and the appreciation. In, 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 honestly, guys, uh, this guy guy is uh, taking a chance. He's not He's taking, not taking a, chance. a chance. He He's has not. taken deliberate okay. steps. No, no, no. Deliberate steps. Tonight, three entrepreneurs, Mudiwa Skincare, Ingebeto Private Limited, and Nature Street Zimbabwe have been placed in the waiting room. Although the future of these entrepreneurs in the competition is uncertain, they gain valuable insight and advice for their businesses. Tandi's village is through to the final round and now stands a chance to be awarded an export development package. A grand season finale will be hosted by Zimtrade and Ecobank, where they will unveil the winners of this season.